I have been doing an experiment, and I decided that it would be quite a good idea to bring you along for the ride, so to speak, and see the results. Now, this is a standard solar light with the tiny little button cell on it, and normally it just drives a single LED, but I wondered how many LEDs could it drive, because it does have a basic boost circuit. So before we go any further, let me show you the schematic of the classic solar circuit. So I shall zoom down this, I shall focus on it so it's nice and crisp, and then zoom down, and we can take a look at the layout. So here's the classic YX8018, which is what this unit's using. It's a four-pin solar light chip, and it's got the solar panel here, which has four sections, giving 0.5 volts per section, so typically about two volts. And that charges this nickel metal hydride cell via a diode in here going to the negative, but it also uses that input to actually monitor the voltage across this and determine when it's dusk by detecting the lack of output from the solar panel. When it is dusk, it then starts pulsing this inductor. Now, normally, the nickel metal hydride cell only has about 1.2 to 1.5 volts across it, and that is not enough to actually make the LED conduct, so it stays off. But as soon as it starts pulsing that, it pulls this end negative of the inductor and builds up a magnetic field. When the magnetic field collapses, uh, this end goes negative and this end goes positive and it adds effectively in series with the cell and it's a high enough voltage that can actually drive the LED. But there is a downside to this because sometimes the LEDs fail with a sort of, sort of a parasitic resistance. And what can happen then is that the nickel metal hydride cell can't charge because the current that's coming from the solar panel is basically being shunted by the faulty LED. And this is particularly prevalent when you've got a big string of LEDs run from one of these circuits because they're all in parallel and if just one of those LEDs goes down, it kills the whole sort of thing. So one option here was to add another LED in series and see what voltage we can get. How many LEDs can we drive in series? Because it means that if one fails, that it effectively will just pass current, but the other one will then act as the LED in series. And uh, it means that you'll still get light from it and it will still allow the nickel metal hydride cell to charge. But I want to see how many I could actually run from this, what voltage it boosts it up to. So here is the arrangement I have, and this is where it might be useful to uh, change the lighting, well, I can show you right now. I'm turning it on, and when I connect it to here, you can see one LED is lighting. I connect it to the next in the line, and two LEDs light, and I found that uh, it will go up to about four, but at dimmer intensity. But when you go to five, it doesn't light them, and that with these LEDs, it's about 2.5 volts per LED forward voltage at that current. And uh, that means it's putting out a maximum of about 10 volts-ish before it starts struggling. So let me show you the intensity variation by turning the lights off, and then I'll point the LEDs at this paper, and we can actually see what the intensity looks like. I'll set that up right now. One moment, please. So let's begin the experiment with one LED. It's a modest intensity. The camera is doing it favours here, but it's still quite a bright output, which is, by intent, that's the... Solar light with its single LED putting out a decent amount of light. Now we switch to two, and you'll see that it's still putting out decent light, but it's nowhere near as much. It is running them at lower current. When I go to three, it's still putting out a modest amount of light, but it has dropped. When I get to four, it is notably dimmer, but we've still got four LEDs lit. And by the time I get to five, they're just barely lit, they're just glowing, it won't even light the paper. So I think the optimum here is probably just two LEDs, maybe three, but two LEDs is a simpler arrangement and uh, I think there is an advantage. In previous experiments, I'm pretty sure that I saw the current drop as well, as well as the intensity dropping, the current from the cell dropped. Uh, so that means adding a couple of LEDs in series is going to let you mix colours because they're in series. You could have red and blue in series. Let's do that, in fact. And then um, that will mix the colour, but it will also reduce the current from the solar panel, from the boost circuit, and it will make the cell last longer. So I'll set that arrangement up right now. One moment, please. The experiment continues. I did another test. I replaced the nickel metal hydride cell with a capacitor, put some leads in the power supply with a current meter in series, 
And then I monitored the current through fr from the cell for lighting the LEDs. With one LED, it was 3.5 milliamps. With two, it was 2.5 milliamps. And with three LEDs in series, it was 1.6 milliamps. So I've gone for two LEDs, plugged into a little connector here so that they can be changed easily. And I've used a red and a blue, but it's worth mentioning that the red is much less efficient than the blue, so it's going to be swamped out by the blue. But let's see how that looks. So I'll turn the lights off again, and we can see how that appears. And this is how it appears. It does have a nice purpley tinge to it. It's dominated by the blue, but it still is that purple. And if I put the diffuser over it, it does add that mixture of red. And in fact, it creates a slight patterning in the inside of the, the sphere which is the original sphere that was with this light. So the answer to the question, well, I'll bring the light back. Watch your eyes, the light is coming back. The light is back. So to answer the question, is there any advantage to putting two red LEDs in the series? It lets you choose a combination of colours. It means that using patterned LEDs, you can actually create a, a pattern inside here. And a good example of that would be using standard clear 5mm LEDs, but cutting the ends off with the uh, side cutters so that it actually creates a sort of crackled lens effect. And that would create a pattern inside of this. But uh, it's interesting to note that you can run up to 4 LEDs, but it does seem to cap the voltage around about 10 volts uh, with the LEDs disconnected. And it, the current does progressively re reduce with the number of LEDs, but so does the intensity to a degree. But uh, two LEDs is a nice compromise here. It means it was a worthwhile experiment to try, and uh, it does open the avenue for more customization of solar lights. So I would say that's a good result.